Last video, we talked about the Congress of Vienna, where the Concert of Europe was formed to essentially curb stomp any revolutions before they could spread too far. The first time that Italians got a taste of this policy was in Naples during the 1820s. When the French invaded, King Ferdinand of Naples had to flee to Sicily. Thanks to the British Navy, there was no way for Napoleon to get him on his island. The British were afraid of the Sicilians revolting, so they strong-armed Ferdinand into adopting a constitution to solidify British control over the island. Ferdinand was not a fan to say the least, but it was better than being left to Napoleon. After the war, Ferdinand pretty much immediately abolished this constitution. After that, he passed the Act of Union in 1816, officially creating the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies. It made the island of Sicily officially part of his realm and stripped away any autonomy the island had left. These acts pretty much made every Sicilian mad. Middle class Carbonari lost their constitution, the Sicilian nobility lost their autonomy, and the poor farmers were essentially reduced to serfs. Back on the mainland, things weren't much better. Ferdinand had huge problems with bandits making the roads unsafe. He sent one of his generals, a man named Guglielmo Pepe, to secure the area. General Pepe was a veteran of the Napoleonic Wars, during which he fought on Napoleon's side, so you know where his political leanings were. To fight the bandits, he organized the Carbonari into an armed militia and became a member himself. Things were made more unstable when news reached Naples of a revolution in Spain. The Spanish king returned after the Congress of Vienna to the Spanish Empire imploding on itself. He gathered a bunch of soldiers in Cadiz to sail to the Americas and put down the Latin American revolutions. An important detail to note here is that he also didn't pay them. This is generally known as a bad call, and the army mutinied. The revolt eventually spiraled into wider calls to reinstate the Constitution of 1812, aka the Constitution of Cadiz. This document restructured the government by limiting the power of the monarchy and creating a chamber of elected representatives. On July 2nd, there was what looked like a small-scale uprising in the town of Nola in Naples. It was led by Luigi Minicini, a liberal Catholic priest who rallied the Carbonari militia there. A troop of cavalry led by Michele Morelli and Giuseppe Silvati stationed there also defected to Medicini. Morelli and Silvati had both also fought with General Pepe on Napoleon's side during the war, and they shared the liberal views of the Carbonari. The revolt began to spread to the surrounding areas, even inspiring the papal enclave of Ponte Corvo to declare independence from the papal states as the Republic of Ponte Corvo. Ferdinand ordered Pepe to put a stop to the revolt, but a revolution was exactly what Pepe was waiting for. He met Morelli and Silvati at the town of Avellino, where the rebels proclaimed him as their leader. Pepe's army slash mob marched towards Naples. Ferdinand still outnumbered Pepe, but he was unnerved by the fact that any troops he sent at Pepe might just switch sides in true Italian fashion. The city of Naples seemed about ready to burst into flames, so Ferdinand gave in, making a declaration on July 5th that he would grant a constitution, completely of his own free will, of course. He was gonna make his own constitution that would give up as little power as possible but his son and heir Francis was a bit overeager and proclaimed on July 7th that this constitution would be identical to the constitution of Cadiz. If he backed out now, he'd have anarchy on his hands, so he adopted the Spanish constitution. Just like that, the two Sicilies had become a constitutional monarchy with little to no bloodshed. After the revolution, Sicilians decided that they wanted a revolution of their own. They wanted the constitution they had back in 1812, which had given them a lot more independence than the current one. Rioters in Palermo began to arm themselves and free prisoners. On the 17th of July, the garrison was ordered to quell the riots, which ended in a huge brawl between them and the rioters. The Sicilians couldn't really agree amongst themselves on much. The barons wanted their own parliament within the two Sicilies, the peasants wanted full independence, and the Carbonari had their usual range of goals. Freedom fighters known as Squadre roamed the streets of major cities to intimidate and fight with the other rebel factions and government forces. The Neapolitans, who just had their own revolution a few weeks ago, ironically saw the Sicilian revolution as a threat and sent General Pepe's brother Florestano to deal with them. He marched on Palermo, and the threat of his army scared some of the ringleaders into negotiations. But when rival factions saw that they were discussing surrender, their men were fired on by gangs and Florestano spent the next 10 days pacifying the island. 
Early in October, he secured an agreement where Sicily would remain part of Naples and they would provide 10,000 men for the Neapolitan army. In return, they would get their own parliament, which all things considered wasn't too bad a deal. Florestano sent this treaty to be ratified by the brand new Chamber of Representatives in Naples, who had just taken office that month. One of the first decisions they made was to strike down this treaty with Sicily. They felt that the Sicilians did not deserve representation, causing hostilities to flare up again. This forced Naples to divert 6,000 men to the island, and the Sicilian army that was promised was never delivered on. This left Naples out 16,000 men, just as Benedict was turning his attention toward the two Sicilies. When he heard the news that Ferdinand had given in to the rebels, he was pretty surprised. He wrote about how Naples had upset his calculations and got to work trying to restore stability. He called the Holy Alliance to the Congress of Laybach in January of 1821. Ferdinand was also invited, but he had to request permission to attend from the Chamber of Representatives. The Chamber did not want to give any reason for Austria to justify an invasion, so they let him go. General Pepe as commander-in-chief also made no attempt to stop him. When Ferdinand got to Leibach, he formally requested that Austria help him destroy the revolution. Metternich was expecting a request like this and happily agreed. He could have just invaded without Ferdinand's permission, but this would give the invasion some legitimacy. Austria sent the Chamber of Representatives an ultimatum. Dissolve yourself or Ferdinand will by force. The Chamber made the you can't fire me, I quit decision and declared war on Austria. Ferdinand's Austrian army of 52,000 arrived in Italy later in the month. On February 7th, the Pope himself called upon Italians to let the Austrians pass through without harassment. The Neapolitans raised 50,000 soldiers, 18,000 of which were given to General Pepe. Many of these were his Carbonari militia, who only really had experience fighting the gangs of the south, or Sicilian squadra. General Pepe mentions that the men regularly had no food, and 2,000 of his soldiers straight up showed up without any weapons. He arranged for them to be given pikes, which in the early 1800s wasn't totally unheard of, but it was a telltale sign of a poorly equipped militia. Pepe was also strongly opposed to a defensive war. He wanted to use the war as an opportunity to inspire the rest of Italy into revolting. This wasn't a terrible idea. He didn't know it at the time, but Piedmont was a powder keg, and if he could get there, he could count on inspiring them into revolting. The Austrians under General Johann Fremont arrived at the border town of Rieti in Papal States territory. He occupied the town and placed his light infantry on the hills overlooking the main road. Pepe's scouts informed him that the garrison at Rieti was only about 6,000 men, so Pepe took about 10,000 troops and moved to engage from the southeast on March 7th. He divided his army into three brigades. The wings moved to take the hills on either side of the town, while the center column waited in reserve. Pepe ordered his wings to force the Austrians off the high ground surrounding the city. To his credit, the Neapolitans on Pepe's right managed to drive the Austrians off the hill. The brigade on his left arrived too slow, giving the Austrians enough time to reinforce. Fremont ordered his hussars to charge up the hill on Pepe's right, but the trees in the incline made the charge ineffective, and the militia held their ground. When Pepe saw that his militia were withstanding the Austrian cavalry, he felt bold enough to move his reserves and artillery up the road to take Rieti. As he did this, Austrian reinforcements arrived. Fremont poured his new force onto Pepe's right to retake the hill. The militia finally began to waver. Pepe briefly considered sending his reserves up to support his right, but more and more Austrians just kept coming he ordered a retreat back across the border. During the retreat, his poorly trained men panicked, and it turned into a disorganized rout. The defeat shattered the confidence of the Neapolitans, and Fremont wouldn't face any more resistance up to his capture of Naples on March 23rd. Ferdinand returned to Naples with a vengeance, and the revolution was over as quickly as it had begun. The power of the Chamber of Representatives was crushed, and there were mass roundups and executions of Carbonari, including ringleaders like Morelli and Silvati. General Pepe and Minicidi, with many others, were exiled. The remnants of the Sicilian rebels were destroyed, and little Pontecorvo surrendered to Fremont and was returned to the Pope later in March. The revolution in the two Sicilies was a huge failure. You can easily point to Austria as the reason it failed, but it goes deeper than that. General Pepe's goal of inspiring an Italian-wide revolution was a little ahead of its time, and the factions in the two Sicilies ended up fighting each other as much as they had fought Metternich. 
If the Carbonari were going to unite Italy, they'd need to do a better job at getting Italians to fight their common enemy. Hey, to anybody still listening, um, I know I said I was going to do Piedmont's Revolution of 1820 in this video too, but uh, when I wrote the script, it just got a little too clunky, so I'm going to do that in the next video, so stay tuned for that. Thanks a bunch. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.